In this video, we'll look at the finite output resistance of MOSFETs and saturation. So far, our modeling of the transistor's IV characteristics has focused on two modes of operation. First, in triode, where this expression here holds, and there's a continuous channel region from source to drain. And secondly, when VDS equals the overdrive voltage and the channel region becomes pinched off at the drain, where we see the classic square law. We've also assumed until now that for larger drain source voltages, the drain current remains constant at this level. So a plot of ID versus VDS becomes perfectly flat once we enter saturation with absolutely no dependence on the drain source voltage. This, as we'll see, is an idealization. In fact, there remains some weak dependence on VDS. A detailed understanding of the physics of MOSFET operation in saturation is quite complicated. Fortunately, we need not know every detail in order to model and make use of transistors in saturation. The effect that we're going to consider is called channel length modulation. It arises when the drain source voltage goes beyond the overdrive voltage. The channel region effectively gets pinched off and shortened by some amount. However, in spite of this, current continues to flow between drain and source. You can think of it as the source has injected carriers into the channel and there is an electric field sweeping them across. So once they're in there, they continue to flow all the way to the drain. Channel length modulation does have an effect on the drain current, however. For larger values of VDS, the channel gets shorter and the drain current increases slightly. This is captured by adding an extra term to our square law expression. Now you'll notice that when VDS is small, this term becomes negligible and we've got our old square law expression. But as VDS increases, even for fixed VGS, the drain current will start to increase again linearly. So on our plot of ID versus VDS for a fixed gate source voltage, whereas until now, we'd assumed that the drain current remains constant in saturation. In fact, what we see is that the drain current continues to increase with a finite slope. The parameter that determines that slope in saturation is lambda, this constant of proportionality between VDS and the regular square law current. Sometimes, instead of lambda, we'll use the parameter V subscript A. This should be a subscript here. VA, in turn, is proportional to the channel length. If you make that substitution into our drain current expression, you'll see that that implies that for shorter channel length devices L, the channel length modulation effect becomes more pronounced and this slope is steeper. Indeed, for very long channel length devices, we see behavior that more closely mimics the ideal square law. The constant of proportionality between VA, also sometimes called the early voltage, and L is VA prime. Now you can think of the value of VA as representing the point on the ID versus VDS plot, where this part of the ID versus VDS curve, if extended back to the left, all the way to the negative real axis, would intersect. In fact, regardless of VGS, the plot will always intersect zero current way back at a voltage of negative VA. Remember, these dashed lines are just extensions of the plot and saturation. They're not real. But they capture a nice uh, intuition that, are, that can be useful to keep in mind, which is that for higher values of, VG, of overdrive voltage, and hence higher values of VGS, the slope of this curve and saturation uh, increases. Now, 
this slope looks like a linear relationship between drain current and VDS. So therefore, we return to our picture where it looks like there's a kind of a resistance between ID and VDS. It's not actually a resistance, but we can model it as such. We can model the dependence, let's say, between drain current and drain source voltage as a resistance. And so the res equivalent resistance we would use to model that would have a value of one over the slope of this part of the curve, because this is a plot of current versus voltage. We call that resistance RO, the output resistance of the MOSFET in saturation, or some people refer to it as RDS in saturation, although that can get confusing because we've also used RDS to represent the resistance of the channel region in triode, which we see is much lower because clearly in this part of the curve, the slope is much higher. So here we compare our simple model of saturation where the drain region becomes pinched off and we've got a simple square law model shown on the left to the model where we incorporate channel length modulation shown on the right, where we introduce this extra term that takes into account the dependence of drain current on VDS. In order to capture this in our model, we have to augment the square law voltage dependent current source here with the drain source resistance, RO, in saturation. Again, this captures the extra current that's added on top of the square law current due to increasing VDS beyond the overdrive voltage. So we've got two models for the MOSFET now in saturation. As you might imagine, the one on the right is a little bit more complicated and complicates our analysis a little bit more because there's this extra term. So just as the case with diodes where we had different models of different complexity and resulting in more or less accurate um, calculations of voltages and current in our circuit, the same is true here. We've got to use some judgment to know whether we need the accuracy provided by this model or whether an approximate result neglecting RO is sufficient. 